Eternal Life Christianity from Wikipedia, the Free Encyclopedia. Eternal Life traditionally refers to continued life after death as outlined in Christian eschatology. The Apostles' Creed testifies, I believe the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. In this view, eternal life commences after the second coming of Jesus and the resurrection of the dead, although in the New Testament's Jahanin literature, there are references to eternal life commencing in the early life of the believer, possibly indicating an inaugurated eschatology. According to mainstream Christian theology after death but before the second coming the saved live with God in an intermediate state but after the second coming experience the physical resurrection of the dead and the physical res recreation of a new earth the catechism of the cat Catholic Church states, By death, the soul is separated from the body, but in the resurrection, God will give incorruptible life to our body, transformed by reunion with, reunion with our soul. Just as Christ is risen and lives forever, so all of us will rise at the last day. And T. Wright argues that God's plan is not to be not to abandon this world, rather, he intends to remake it. And when he does, he will raise all people to new bodily life to live in it. That is the promise of the Christian gospel. In the synoptic gospels, in the Pauline letters, eternal life is generally regarded as a future experience, but the Gospel of John differs from them in its emphasis on eternal life as a present possession. Raymond E. Brown points out that in the Synoptic Gospels, eternal life is something received at the final judgment or a future age mark chapter 10 verse 30 matthew chapter 18 verses 8 through 9 but the gospel of john positions eternal life as a present possibility as in john chapter 5 verse 24 thus Unlike the synoptics in the Gospel of John, eternal life is not only futuristic, but also pertains to the present. In John, those who accept Christ can possess life here and now, as well as in the eternity, for they have passed from death to life, as in John chapter 5, verse 24. He who hears my word, and believes him that sent me has eternal life and comes not into judgment but has passed out of death into life in john the purpose for the incarnation death resurrection and glorification of the word was to provide eternal life to humanity in the new testament Scholars such as John H. Leith assert that eternal life is never described in detail in the New Testament, although assurances are provided that the faithful will receive it. Other scholars such as D.A. Carson suggest that eternal life is explicitly defined in John chapter 17 verse 3 where Jesus says in his high priestly prayer now this is eternal life 
that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. Carson says of this verse that eternal life turns on nothing more and nothing less than knowledge of the true God, and that it is not so much everlasting life as personal knowledge of the everlasting one. The Erdman's Dictionary of the Bible, on the other hand, contends that the nature of eternal life is only sketched in its essential elements in the New Testament. John W. Rittenberg says that eternal life is knowing God and that Jesus implies an intim intimate relationship with God that matures over time. While the synoptic gospels are seen as focusing on the proclamation of the kingdom of God, some scholars see eternal life as a central theme of Jesus, Jesus' preaching in the Gospel of John, where receiving eternal life is seen to be synonymous with entering the kingdom. In Christian teachings, eternal life is not an inherent part of human existence and is a unique gift from God based on the model of the resurrection of Jesus viewed as a unique event through which death was conquered once for all permitted Christians to experience eternal life this eternal life is provided to believers generally assumed to be at the resurrection of the dead in New Testament theology in addition to life so example blah blah in Greek there is also a promised spiritual life sometimes described by the adjective eternal aeonos uh, example in Greek but other times simply referred to as life in both John and Paul the possibility of attaining eternal life and avoiding the wrath of God is dependent dependent on believing in Jesus, the Son of God. For John, abiding in Christ involves love for one another, as in John chapter 15, verses 9 through 17, and John chapter 5, verse 24, the existence of divine love in believers then facilitates the influence of the gospel on the world and lead, lead, lead to widespread salvation. 1 John chapter 3, verse 14, then manifest the already but not yet acquisition of eternal life by referring to the acquisition of eternal life as a once for all that pax event and the role of love is attaining it we know that we have passed from death to life because we love each other anyone who does not love remains in death somewhat reminiscent of the words of Jesus in John chapter 5 verse 24 Pauline letters in the Pauline epistles the oldest text in the New Testament eternal life becomes possible in the person of Christ 